Hi friends, Father Kerry Walters here, pastor of Holy Spirit, American National Catholic Church, and this is another Holy Spirit moment. This went on the time that Christianity went imperial. You know, in the first three centuries of the faith, our forefathers and foremothers were really clear in their minds about what it meant to be a follower of the Prince of Peace, whose nativity you and I have just finished celebrating. To be a follower of the Prince of Peace meant minimally that one refrained from killing other human beings or even being indirectly involved in the killing of other human beings. If you read the Apostolic Fathers and the Pre-Nicene Fathers, you will find near unanimity that abortion and infanticide are sinful because they result in the killing of human beings. You will find the same condemnation for capital punishment and for gladiatorial games. And you will find near unanimous consensus that even serving as a magistrate is unlawful for a Christian because that position might lead one to the possibility of having to condemn a felon to death or serving in the military because doing so might mean that at one point or another one would have to take up arms against other human beings and possibly slay them. One of the most strident defenders of the proposition that Christians under no circumstances are allowed to kill was the uh, uh, Latin uh, author Lactantius. Lactantius was born around AD 250, died around 75 years later. He was originally from North Africa. Uh, in all likelihood, he was a Berber, um, but he uh, uh, relocated to what today is Turkey uh, very early in his life to teach uh, rhetoric. Um, he converted to Christianity uh, around midlife. Um, and in the years A.D. 303 to probably 311, he worked on what has come to be the first Latin summary of the Christian faith. It was called and is called the Divine Institutes. Um, it is written in beautiful, beautiful Latin. In fact, Renaissance fans of Lactantius claimed that he was the Christian Cicero because his prose style was so lovely. In that particular book, The Divine Institutes, especially in chapters uh, 4, 5, and 6, Lactantius uh, condemns roundly uh, any killing of any human being by any of the means that I just um, listed for you. He is absolutely um, without any doubt that any kind of killing, direct or indirect, is sinful and hence unlawful for the Christian. Um, and he says that if all the world uh, followed the moral principles of Christianity, of the followers of Prince of Peace, then the world would be a much better place. He writes this, for example, in the Divine Institutes. He says, there would not be these evils on the earth, killing, if there were by common consent a general uh, observation of the law of God, if those things were done by all which our people alone perform, how happy and how golden would be the condition of human affairs, if throughout the world gentleness and piety and peace and innocence and equity and temperance and faith took up their abode. And they can only do that, Lactantius argues, if in point of fact uh, everyone follows the Christian principle of refraining from killing. Such is Lactantius speaking for the first three centuries of the faith. But suddenly and abruptly a shift takes place. In a book that Lactantius writes probably in the years 311 to 313. It's called On the Death of Those Who Persecuted Christians. We find him making a startling about faith. Now violence is perfectly okay and even obligatory if in point of fact it helps Christians, if it punishes persecutors of Christianity, and if it furthers, as if violence could ever further, the kingdom of God. What happened? What caused that radical shift? And I want to assure you, my friends, that that shift isn't unique to Lactantius, 
because the entire faith begins to make that same shift until by the 5th century with Augustine, you actually have one of the church fathers making a case for how warfare can be just. Well, this happened. Diocletian, the Roman emperor Diocletian, started in about the year 303, about the year that uh, Lactantius began writing his Divine Institutes, the longest, the bloodiest, and thank goodness, the last persecution of Christians in the empire. It lasted for over a decade, this period of persecution. And it was exacerbated by the fact that Roman Empire found itself in the midst of a civil war during much of this time, because Diocletian had divided the empire up uh, between four uh, Caesars, four sub-emperors, thinking that it would be um, administratively better to have four rulers in such a vast realm. But in point of fact, as you may well have imagined, it led to dissent and before long bloody civil war. Finally, one of the four, Constantine, who would become known as Constantine the Great, won. And in the famous Edict of Milan, which was promulgated in A.D. 313, Constantine gave official toleration to the Christian faith. And it was only about 10 years later when, in point of fact, Christianity had become the favored religion of the empire. It was at that point in A.D. 313 that Lactantius suddenly decided that, in point of fact, violence, if perpetrated by the government, for the sake of Christianity, was okay. So you can see here that Lactantius has welded the faith to political, secular, imperial power. And it is just a short step from doing that to infiltrating the faith with what many people consider to be uh, values that go against the grain of the faith. Values, for example, that say that Christians can cooperate in killing, both directly and indirectly. The entire church universal will make that move. Lactantius is just the most obvious and immediate, in-your-face example of it, since in one year he is promulgating the traditional view, and in the very next year he has gone the opposite direction. It is a question that still vexes us, isn't it? How a Christian should respond to situations that seem to be so out of hand, so egregious that violence might be called for in order to redress them. Uh, Reinhold Niebuhr, the 20th century American theologian, uh, faced exactly this kind of problem, especially during the period in which Nazism in Germany was on the rise. And he wound up defending a position that's come to be known as Christian realism, that yes, the Prince of Peace argued, preached, that we should never resort to violence, but in point of fact, you and I live in a fallen, sinful world in which sometimes we have to resort to violence in order to prevent worse evils. Whether one agrees with that position or not, it is one that I don't think could have been taken seriously in the first three centuries of the faith, because using violence for any reason whatsoever, under any circumstances whatsoever, was simply not on the radar, was simply off the table for any faithful Christian. That shift in the early fourth century then was a sea change in the way Christians would henceforth look at the world and their role in it, for better or for worse. My friends, this has been another Holy Spirit moment. Thank you for watching. Please wear your masks and exercise caution. The COVID virus is raging like a lion throughout the entire nation. Happy New Year, and I will see you soon. God bless.